If you have your Bibles, go into 1 Timothy chapter 3. Kind of a different subject, but I believe God wants to give a harvest to Souls Harbor. And when you read about the harvest, there needs to be laborers. Amen. There's a little guy running around. Well, he's not really running. He's kind of carrying around, but he will be. Nehemiah. In order for him to come forth, Sister Jessica had to labor. For us to bring forth children in this church, there's going to be labor, consistent, faithful laborers. Amen. Those that are faithful to prayer, those that are faithful to Bible reading, those, let me just say it in a nutshell, that are faithful to God. God looks at our service. God, God knows what time we arrive here. God knows our prayer life. He knows our Bible reading. He knows our commitment. He knows the number of hairs upon our head. Mine's getting easier to count every day. But he knows. I, 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 I want to be an honest laborer for the kingdom of God. I mean, I, I think you should have pride in what you do for a living, and I think you should do it with incredible integrity and be known at your occupation by those that work with you as, I want to work with that person. Well, let be the same be said when you come into the house of the Lord. Oh, let it be said when I come into the house of the Lord, when... When, when, when I'm known and, and seen and, and, and involved, hey, man, I, I, man, I want to be a, I want to be a part of that. Amen. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, two verses here to get us started. Paul speaking and writing a letter to Timothy says, but if I tarry long, and I think the reference is if I'm not there by your side, how many, how many like someone to harp on you about the same thing all the time? probably about as much as they like harping on it because you ain't getting it yet. Let me take these off to see everybody. We need to turn these spotlights off on Wednesday night because I try to look at you on Wednesdays and teaching instead of preaching. That thou mayest know how thou oughtest, don't you just love this vernacular, to behave. Look at your neighbor and say, behave. Behave yourself in the house of God. There is an expectation of behavior for the saints of God. Your position, your title, your longevity do not dismiss you from your conduct and behavior. Boy, I tell you what, if pastors started acting up, y'all come out of the woodwork pastor says something, well, who does he think he is? Same person you think you are when you don't like what I do. <laughs> I'm here all week. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is the church of the living God, the pillar on the ground of truth. And that's another message, but not tonight. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was, when did he do that? The incarnation of Jesus Christ. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world and received up into glory. Lord, we need you tonight. Help me with this simple Bible study to help us renew and revive and restore our behavior mentally, emotionally, physically, our conduct, our attitude towards the house of God, the work of God, the kingdom of God, and ultimately towards you, Lord, and how we treat the things of God. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Going further in Ephesians chapter 4, a uh, familiar verse of scripture. I've just got a few here I want to get through and then we'll move on. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And if you're there in Ephesians 4 verses 11 and 12, 
there's three succinct fours, your reasons, for the perfecting of the saints. So let me just say this. Yeah. We expect you to work towards perfection. There's an expectation of you improving today on who you were yesterday. Progress report. Report cards. Those dreaded those dreaded analysis of who you've actually been and not who you think you've been. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For the work of the ministry. I'm going to tell you the most important thing in the house of God isn't this. Because you have to understand the plan of salvation and salvation preaching is to save. But your conduct our daily life is vitally important and often overlooked. And I know that we fall into that, that, that realm of dressing up or putting on that, that church face and coming in here and conducting ourselves one way. Hello? But it matters because most ministry doesn't happen here. It happens out there. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now that happens here. How you act here matters. When you are in the pastoral leadership team and you're not here on time for prayer, you put a mark against the pastor, the kingdom of God, the house of God, the work of God. When you don't take serious the church, and its purpose, and you are a person in esteem, you bring a reproach. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many have conduct requirements in your home? God, I hope you do. There's conduct requirements and expectations in the house of God. If you are in a reputation for something, and you live below that, people go, hmm, come on, you deal with this on your job. Let you lose your temper on your job, and there's going to be that joker that's been working there two weeks, looks at you, I thought you was a Christian. <laughs> now, I know that ain't ever happened to nobody here. Everybody here, every, everybody at your job thinks you're God's gift to the planet. You walk in the room, everybody takes notice. Except when you walk into the church, it's a little different. Let's get into this. Ephesians tells us our behavior matters because in Ephesians 4, continuing on, uh, we'll go in verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Anybody vacillate in one minute, you're, everything about God is great, and the next minute it's not? Well, then this is talking to you. One minute you're on fire, and the next minute you're a wet blanket. One minute you, are you hearing what I'm saying? This isn't leaving anybody out because, well, I'm not a child of God. I'm a, I'm a senior citizen here now. Well, next to God's age, child, all right. That we henceforth, henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You have to be stable. And our behavior has to demonstrate that. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may, here we go. Turn to your neighbor and say, grow up unto him in some things. I love it when everybody, well, I'm just not called to that. But we better yank this one out of the Bible. All things, I need to improve. Now, I'm going to be better at some things in, in one day than I am the next, but Overall, I need to improve. It's kind of the blessings of getting old, young people. I'll be honest with you. There's things you're going to struggle with. I don't know. I was, I, was, I was talking to my son the other day, and he made a comment about going back to another day. And I looked at him and said, oh, come on, I don't want to go back that far. I don't want to have to. <laughs> There's just some things. Can I get an amen from anybody in here who's got a little age on you? There's a few things I don't want to go through again. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Now, there's a few things I'd like to do over. 
But there's definitely some stages in life growing up I don't want to go through again. But we need to grow up unto him in all things, which is the head even Christ. We're talking about grow up in God. There's a difference between growing up in the church and growing up in Christ. Are you hearing me? From whom the whole body fitly joined together. That means it matters how we conduct ourselves and how we fit with the body. If you've been paying attention to pastor, I've got a right knee. It's really not fitting in right now. <laughs> uh, uh, in fact, I don't know. It's, it's been so long now. I don't know a service where I haven't tweaked it up here. In fact, I was over there worshiping and it went out. I'm in almost laid out on them chairs. It's not working with me. It's kind of like when you're in the house of God and you have pastors and teachers, you got the order, and someone wants to get out of order, they have a prima donna spirit, or they're an exception to the rule, or like my knee, or let me put it this way. Cancer is your own cell going against the body. Don't be a cancer in the church. That's why we have scriptural teaching for us to say, wait a minute. No one here can say, well, that, that, that doesn't apply to me. <laughs> Probably does so even more so at that point. So the body needs to come together and work together to the unity of doing the kingdom of God's work, right? Which is being the church, winning the lost, being the church, winning the lost. Yes. Amen? And compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working. We need to be effective. Yes. You need to be effective. I'll give you something that would be good for you to do if you're honest about being in, involved, important, and living up. To. Write a mission statement for your life. Write a mission statement for your purpose. If you have a position around here, Write a mission statement. Hey, ladies, write a mission statement as a wife. Husbands, write a mission statement. You realize you're the Lord of your house? Now, you like the Lord and say, bless God, we're going to eat what I want, but you've, you've got to give your life for the bride. Oh, but, you know, there's a few other things in there that just, bless God, I'm the man. I sit at the head of the table and <laughs> your conduct is more important than your dress code. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Measure in every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. This is an edifice. It was edified. It was built. And that's what we have to do spiritually. We have to build ourselves up. The Bible talks about building ourselves up, praying in the Holy Ghost. To edify is the act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom, happiness, and holiness. Holiness is not a bad word. Holy, holiness is a cherished word. We serve a holy God. It's an attribute of God. God is not like the world. We are supposed to every day get a little bit more attached to the things of this world. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Having therefore these promises, dear little beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now, I'll be honest with you. If I had to have a top 10 of scriptures that I wish weren't in the Bible, this would probably be one of them. Because all of a sudden I came up and prayed, God, stop me from liking this or wanting to do that. Did God grab you by the nap of the neck, throw you in the car, and drive you here tonight? Well, you had to make a choice. And God still leaves it up to you to make a choice. When you say you love him, he says, you'll, you'll do my commandments. You'll fulfill, you'll, this will be your, hello? And so we have to cleanse ourselves. I, we have to, I gotta, I have to stop doing that. We create our own addiction. We create a lot of our own problems. Yeah. It may not be a sinful thing, 
biblically, but it might be for where God has called you. Are you hearing me? There's a standard upon your position. There's a standard upon your declaration. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I could probably call up the leader of China and talk to him. But if you're a military leader and you do it out of order, there's something wrong there. I knew I'd get some of y'all on that. But we are to perfect holiness in the fear of God. See, the problem is, is we get our holiness, but we don't have holiness according to the measure of God, which it doesn't grow. We get kind of stuck. We get kind of stagnated. And one of the worst things to do, especially as a leader, is to get stagnant. Because stagnation's another, well, you're drying up. And on the way to drying up, you're starting to stink. And as you're starting to stink, you're bringing death. Are you hearing me? So we have to perfect, which means to fulfill further. I get better today. Sometime back, I was working on a marinade for ribeye steaks. And I was trying things and doing things, and I was getting really, really close. To, I think I dialed it in. But every time I would try to improve and improve, we need to, I want to be closer to God today. I, I know it's easy to go, you know, it's just Wednesday night. But can you imagine our walk in power with God if we were improving instead of becoming satisfied? Being satisfied leads to stagnation. None of us have exhausted everything about God. I want to get into some of this here in a minute. We have to improve ourselves by getting closer to the Lord and stronger in regards to our part of the church or the body of Christ. What happens if a part of your body like your knee or my knee gets weaker instead of stronger? It slows the whole body down. The writer of Hebrews had to address this issue. He's dealing with behavior, people that seem to be going backwards rather than forwards. And he says in Hebrews chapter 5, 12 through 14, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk. Kind of curate your food again because you've, you've gotten so sideways, you've regressed, and now we have to walk around eggshells because of your feelings and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Oh, Lord, help me to seek his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first what? And when you don't do that, the Bible says you're a baby. Because strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Talking about maturation here. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. In other words, they're stronger. They've built it up. They've developed it because they can discern both good and evil. Not what's sin and what's not sin, but what's good and what's not. This is okay for me to have life. That, that may not be sin, but it's not good for where God's trying to take me. In our text, Timothy was admonished about his behavior and reminded there is a spiritual expectation placed upon those who are members of the church, of the body. We have an obligation to the body to be spiritually healthy so that I may edify the body. I need to be spiritually healthy. If you're of the mindset, it don't matter if I pray before church, it doesn't matter if I take care of myself spiritually. It doesn't matter how I handle myself, my conduct. You know, society has an answer for people that don't improve or don't grow up. It's called jail, juvenile hall. It's called prison. See, you can, a child can do like that right there. Ah, 
<laughs> Get crying, snot and bawling. You take your little baba and you take, oh, God. But there comes a point when you got to stop changing diapers, start providing bottles, and you got to say, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Grow up. Grow up. And society say, grow up in the church. Turn your neighbors say, it's time to grow up. Many people approach church living and serving God with preconceived ideas or expectation about what makes an excellent service. And I doubt today we'll be in somebody's top 10 all-time services because the focus is on improvement. Nobody likes to be told, you need to get to the gym. Nobody likes to be told, hey, you might want to put them cupcakes down. Nobody likes to be told, you need to pray more. Nobody likes to be told, you know, you just miss way too much church. We get offended. We had a saying in the church that helped me grow up, Sister Crystal. If you're offended, you're carnal. So live in a way where you're not getting offended because no one can say anything because you're improving. It's so funny. You see people come in, they always, this person needs to do this and this person needs to do that. And, this. and I'm sitting there sometimes looking at, oh my God, do you, do, you, do you realize what I can say right now? But I can't because I know their little feelings are. So it's important that our expectation meets God's requirements. Rather than allowing God and the ministry, the spiritual liberty and authority to lead a church service, many kind of stand or sit in judgment. Well, let's see how he does. Well, that didn't minister to me tonight. There's a room over there. There's a form of ministry going on right now focused on just one. It ain't doing you a bit of good. But there's a baby that needs all the focus and attention. If you're constantly coming in here and it needs to be focused on you and your needs, there's a room back there for you. Spiritually speaking. Listen, in the Old Testament, God revealed himself in many ways. I mean, Peter stayed with him. The grow-up service. About behavior. A burning bush. A cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. Whispering. Thundering. And the list really goes on. The moving of the Spirit. The moving of the Spirit of God is more than just a shout dance, goosebumps, or I like that. And I'm all for jumping and shouting and dancing and enjoying the message in the ministry. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's more than that. Right. It's beyond that. It's greater than that because you can get that feeling at a concert. You can get that at a football game. In fact, some of you are so enamored with getting that, you've got things outside of here that are more important to you than your soul. Trust me, the Bible says so. You, you, you come in here and you, you punch your time clock here, but you can't get, wait to get back to this or to that or that thing that keeps you up or gets you up and you got to get this done and you want to work on this and you, are you hearing me? We got to understand that our behavior is a product of our thinking. When I come into the house of God, oh, Lord, I, I don't want to just come here and do time. Lord, I want to, what are you doing tonight, God? Whose life, and I'm telling you, someone's life can change here tonight. Somebody that hasn't been ministry can become ministry. Someone that hasn't been filled with the Holy Ghost can be filled with the Holy Ghost and led of, of, of things of God and do things that some of us 
have sat around nonchalantly thinking, well, I guess I'm not called to that. You're about to get an indictment for those of you that have not improved. You're going you're gonna to see that we're instructed to improve in more ways than what I'm talking about tonight. The church is more than jumping the chair. In fact, right now, there's, there's a general hush in me. I feel that. And, 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 and it's more than a time of blissful silence right before comes an interpretation. Right now, she would love some blissful silence. But we can all hear that. He needs tending to. And sometimes some of us come in with a mindset like that, and we need tending to. Right? When you realize that the very second verse in our Bible gives a clue as to how the Spirit operates, it says in Genesis 1 and 2, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. John 3 and 8 says, and the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. John 3, 8 compares the Spirit to the wind that blows where and when it wants to blow. God can do what he wants. Can we give God the liberty? Can we give God, hey, hey, whatever you want to do tonight, Lord, lead me, Lord. I'll follow. Lead me, Lord. What are you going to do here tonight? If you want to move during song service, I'm ready. I haven't found my seat. Okay, church. Let's see what y'all. No, we're in here. I'm in the presence of God. He can move on anybody. He can, he can move on someone you would least expect tonight. But let me say this here. Tonight. Don't be confused when you see the unspiritual get erratic tonight. Because I'm talking about spiritual things, and those, those things that are easily affected by the wrong spirits will be affected. And those of you nodding in agreement, that's a mandate and an indictment that you become more spiritual when that's needed. My point is simply that God is not always predictable. God will not be controllable or even entirely understandable. And you won't manipulate God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It seems counterintuitive for an apostolic to say the Holy Spirit's moving is more than emotional. Although it can be emotional. And it's foolish to regulate, to relegate the Holy Ghost operation to mere emotion because our emotions play tricks on us. The Holy Ghost can and should cause us to celebrate. Yes, amen. Speak in tongues, amen. sing, dance, shout, become demonstrative and extravagant in our praise. Amen. In fact, you'll find the more spiritual people are, the more thankful people are, the more worshipful they will be. And anybody that says counter to that has got something to hide. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 6, 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. He, he's involved here. He, 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 he's, if you, if you know what's going on there, there's something about you. When you get back with God, when you, see the sad thing is some of you get so excited, you know, find a hundred dollar bill in your pocket. I've been there, done that. Or, you, or you're excited more about your finances or, or the, and there ought to be something about us when we realize I was lost in a pit of sin. But today, I know I'm in the presence of God. And I say, that makes people get excited. That makes the real people stand up. You just can't sit back on. I've heard all this before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be caught up in something else instead of here tonight. And that's worthy of his praise. Next two. 14, something demonstrative happened. I, 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 and Paul even said it, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, I'm glad I speak in tongues more than all of you. There's a problem if you don't have the ability to pray through and speak in tongues. There's something wrong. Hello? You better find out and get that figured out and get that fixed. Jesus, I need to get the Holy Ghost 
undeniably. Yeah. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, hey, and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you. Hearken to my word. She's not to. Get this. For these are not drunken. No, 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 no. What you're seeing here is a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost and the lives of humanity. And some of us need to wake up and say, God, I want to yield myself to that again like never before. We are coming into the last days, and some of you, the only way you're going to be able to make it and know what God wants you to do is to be close to him. You better hear what this preacher's saying to you tonight. And say, you ain't got the corner on the market like you think you do. If you can't come up here, if you struggle even coming up here, you need to find that place and get praying through to where there's no humility left and you're so full of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe this is too much for some of y'all. But a great man is always willing to be little. greatest among you is going to be your servant. It's so sad that some people have gotten so big in the world that they mean absolutely nothing in the church. That hurts. For these are not drunken as you suppose things about the third hour of the day. This is that. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream. I'm telling you something right now. We're still that church. We're still that church. Oh, man, I don't have everybody here, but that don't matter. Those people that know that and live that and fulfill that can expect that. We should also be receptive and the Spirit convicts, corrects, rebukes, teaches. Don't say yep after this one. Perfects. And all the other various things that are sometimes painful. In other words, if we are genuinely seeking God's will, every time we gather together as the church and as the children of God, we, we, we will lay aside our personal expectations and requirements and sincerely, and sincerely ask God to have his way. With that in mind, I want to talk about different types of services. Comforting services. Deep spiritual comfort. There's just a time and if you live for God long enough, there's just some times that you need that comfort from God. And the Holy Ghost is that comforter. John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Wow. Whom the Father will send in my name shall teach you all things. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Evidence speaking in other tongues. No one in the Bible got told to have the Holy Ghost because they felt something. They spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That's the evidence. Shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said to you, I need the Holy Ghost to remind me. Some church services are meant to bring comfort to our hearts. It happens in many ways, but the Holy Ghost is a comforter. Philippians, Paul tells us, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known, made known unto God. When you've done that, and the peace of God, which passeth all under, I've seen people get utterly sideways with God and think they're justified in their, in their rightness and arrogance of their humanity. They get mad at God. I'm like, wait a minute. Have you prayed? There's one thing about, one thing to pray, another thing to sit there and bow your head and tell God off. I kind of know what I'm talking about here. I've kind of fallen into that. I know none of you have, but I found myself so busy laying my complaint that I've neglected to give honor and reverence 
And you start quoting all these little idiot things that come in your mind and my mind. And then I finally got come up short. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All that other wisdom junk that you think you got, that you think you know better, that you think you've esteemed to some level above God. Oh, God. I've got to get that peace back into my life. In other words, get him back on the throne and me off of it. And the peace of God, which path us all understand, shall keep your hearts. And minds. So all that anxiety, all that struggle, all that threat, all that worry, you know what it's telling you? It's time to pray. It's time to let the comforter do its work. It's time to get the Holy Ghost. It's time to renew that. It's time to find that. Some of us run around. Let me tell you the biggest problem we have. Some of us talk to each other more than we talk to God. Hey, spouses. You hear what I'm saying? You're not a really good spouse if you're not godly. You're not. I'm a better spouse when I'm seeking the face of God. I'm a better husband. I'm a better everything when I'm walking in the things of God. You, you get me sideways of that, yeah, yeah I'm going to get worse and worse. I'm going to get just like everybody else that isn't close to God. Our evangelistic services and often Church services are designed to be handled, to evangelize the loss and answer the question, what shall we do? And there's many here tonight that need to know, what, what do I need to do? You need to repent. You need to get baptized in Jesus' name, and you need to receive the Holy Ghost evidence speaking in tongues. That way, we know and you know you got the Holy Ghost. None of that confusion stuff that's going on out there in the world today. You will know when the Spirit moves to reach the lost. It is Vitally important for those of us who've already been baptized and received the Holy Ghost to remain involved. It's an indictment for anybody to be up here preaching that and you to check out and say, well, let's see, that's for somebody else. Really? You've missed something. I don't know that you got the Holy Ghost leading God. How can you check out? After that? that's, like, that's like standing there and just being a casual observer and someone needs CPR. And you know CPR. That, that's like standing there. Let me ask some of you right here. If we got one of these little kids running around. Right there, I can't imagine the great demonstration of care and concern if one of those little girls went running across the room and fell and smacked their face and blood went everywhere. They'd be like, you better get out of the way while I get to my baby. Anybody, any, anybody here feel that way about your family? Are you a part of the family of God? And yet you sit there unmoved and someone needs the Holy Ghost or someone needs baptized or someone needs a message that's being preached. This ain't for me tonight. I, I, I question your Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? Spiritually mature Christians are okay when a service isn't explicitly aimed at their needs. I'm not alarmed that little Nehemiah needs the bottle. Every one of us was there at one point. But thank God we've grown up a little bit. That's right, that's good. We kind of use the bottle a little bit. Hello? Amen. If you emotionally check out of an evangelistic service, if you're not concerned about finding someone to pray with, if you're not involved and intimately moved by the presence of God trying to reach for a soul, you need to check your Holy Ghost pulse. Maybe, maybe, maybe you need to drop some titles or some aspirations until you can find that again. No mature Holy Ghost-filled saint should be sitting or standing around aimlessly during a service like that. Right. Amen. Any more than Brother Terry would be sitting there while one of those gir girls is hurting. Yes. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hello? You ought to be concerned with the Holy Ghost concern that trumps anything else in your life because there's nothing greater than being saved. Mark 16 tells us, and he said to them, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new 
tongues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Then there are those, those services that are reminder. I do a lot of those. I didn't realize until I started analyzing it. About no matter how long you've been following Jesus, sometimes we become forgetful and we neglect the principal things to really live in for God. Even worse, sometimes we slip into complacency. And so the Spirit often moves in our church services to remind us of things that we should already know but may have neglected to keep at the forefront. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We, 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 we count on certain things at home, right? Lights are going to be working. Water is going to be working. My family come home tonight and the lights and the water, and they ain't going to look at each other. They're going to look at me. Hello? Some of us pride ourselves. We got all that taken care of. But when you walk in the house of God and they look at you, that there's going, you're going to bring fire in here. That's good. When you yeah. walk in here, that you, what you bring in here is you, you, you're bringing in the integrity of being a Holy Ghost filled lady or man of God that, hey, it's going to get done. Excellently in yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Mm. You see, David got complacent in the time when kings went to battle. He was on a rooftop, giant belly aching in the valley, and Saul's over in his tent. In the New Testament, the Holy Ghost was moving, great things were happening. And Ananias and Sapphira got a little arrogant, came walking into the house of God, agreeing together to lie. Let me tell you something. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to take some reverence to the house of God. It may not be your day in the emergency room, but we're always needing the spiritual hospital. That's good. Amen. Amen. In Jude chapter, in Jude 1, sorry, verses 5 and 6. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, look, you can slip, but left their own habitation. He hath preserved an everlasting change under darkness under the judgment of that great day. We ain't got time to let things slip. It's time to get things tightened up. It's time to say, wait a minute, you know, there's a lot of things I need to, you know, my yard consider day or two. Let me, let me make sure I'm in the Holy Ghost here. Let, 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 me, let me push back the plate. The, oh, pastor didn't call for it. Oh, that's okay. I'm doing it because I want to be closer to God. Prayer starts at uh, 30 minutes for a sermon. Ah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I long for the day when people start getting here an hour before, a few hours before, and my alarm goes off because you're coming here. See, 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 I don't set the level of your spirituality. You do. The proclamation of truth services. John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. It's just sometimes when we preach about doctrine and truth and he's the way, the truth, and the life, those are just services that reaffirm what we believe in. The spirit moves and guides us into all truth. Proclaiming truth is one of the church's primary functions. The Bible says in the last days, what is right is going to be called wrong, and what is wrong is going to be called right. Hello? If you haven't been paying attention, we're here. Prophetic services and apostolic churches should be comfortable with the reality that God has not changed, and the gift of prophecy is still authentic. Noticed at night, I, I, you know, Brother Lulu was preaching the other night. He went in a prof prophetic mode for a moment there. And I know prophetic gifts are sometimes misused and even abused, but then so is everything else. We ain't going to stop it. Let's just try the spirit to see what they're of. Let's, I still believe we need to pray that. I still believe there needs to be something that comes on us. And I, I, I can tell you right now, there are some of you right now, I can tell you right now, if you would lay aside all those things that you got a hold of, God would do great things in your life. But I can't prophesy that God's going to do this in your life until you're willing to let go of some things. Yeah. 
There's nothing wrong with being used of the Holy Ghost. I counted on it tonight. I feel my help. I don't know that it's doing you any good even more than this will. But it's doing me good. Anybody ever felt the unction of the Holy Ghost while you're ministering, while you're talking to someone, while you're witnessing? This? I don't know about you, but I, I'm kind of a junkie. I, I, I kind of like that. I kind of want that. Uh, see, see, some of you like the thrill and the feeling of you know, coming down a, 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 a snowy slope on skis and going 100 miles an hour. And some people like the whatever it is that floats your boat. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I tell you what, I like it when the Holy Ghost moves and there's an amazing move of God and God does something where, wow, how'd that happen there? Well, oh, cause I am a living, breathing, walking, talking example of, of the power of God turning a life and changing it around because if you knew my battle, if you knew where I come, you know, I, I believe in this thing. Nothing wrong with being used of the Holy Ghost. In fact, I hate to break it to some of you, you've been missing out because it's actually encouraged. First Corinthians, Paul speaking in, in 1 Corinthians 12 and 31, but covest earnestly the best gifts. That's it. Hey, God wants to use you. Yeah, and that's, he said, the problem. So I'm not called to that. No, you haven't yielded yourself to that. You got other things more important. Mine. You are spiritual as you want to be. If you want to be a great orator, put your time and effort into it, get an honor of the Holy Ghost and read the word, you're gonna do it. You know how I know? Because I couldn't hold a conversation when I walked into the house of God. I couldn't rattle and talk like you could. That's I couldn't. But Davenport's got a skill and ability to speak better and faster than anybody in this room. Make a lot of money doing it. I walked into the church and I, 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 I just, I was one of those guys that just kind of looked at you. I'd kind of been doing a little bit too much medicinal frying. Man, God gave me, no, I yielded myself to it. I yielded myself to it. I just decided, you know what? I want in this thing. I, I, is, is it wrong? No. Have it earnestly the best gifts. I, I wanted to be used of Sister Crystal, I wanted to be used of God. I remember coming into church, Brother Terry, a brand new convert, still with my long hair and my little chain on, my little cross, and thinking I was off. I, and I, I, I fell into all the cliches of being a new Christian. I went down to the Bible bookstore and I bought the biggest Bible. Because <laughs> I just, I'm a, you bless God, I'm all in with this thing. Need a pickup truck to back this bad boy up in there. I still got it. It's huge. I didn't know better. It really is a sword because I'll knock somebody out with that bad boy they get out of there. I chucked that across the room. You ain't recovering. I'll be repairing another wall. And I got up there and I sat on that. I sat on that front one. That front pew was still there in the same upholstery. I'm blown away that upholstery is going to survive the apocalypse. My God. But that was my spot. And I was so Holy Ghost still, Brother Terry. I walk in there. I love you, brother, but that's my seat. <laughs> I still had a little bit of that worldliness. They moved. <laughs> well, I'm not saying it was right, but it's just God straightened me out and he said, I better move him to the platform where he's going to hurt somebody. I don't know. I just came to my mind. I'm sorry. I'm being cool. Let me get back on my notes. Come in earnest. If, if you think God's going to deny someone to, to be involved in the power of God when he even said in his own word, the labors are few. You're telling me you bought your own lie. I have not called to that or God isn't using that. No, God will use you to the level you yield, yield to. Paul tells, covet the best gift. If you want to be used, yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. He'll use you. Ask Gideon. Ask Moses. Paul, who used to be Saul, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent. What's he saying? If you'll get in this thing, you'll be used in this thing. Are you hearing me? 
it's okay to want and strive to be used in church. Let me tell you what's not okay. To give me a hard time and you want to be used, but you ain't living a life. Look, I get it. Everybody has problems. Everybody has sickness. Everything, but your MO is your MO. If you're just not faithful, stop. Stop right there. If you can't honestly make it to prayer on time at the minimum, stop. I, I, it's, go ahead. It's fine what you're doing, but stop wanting to advance in the kingdom of God without putting the kingdom of God first. Honestly, every man here knows that if you want to be good at your craft, you better put some time in. Every lady knows, listen, if you're going to be good at what you do, you got to, why, why do we treat the things of God so casually and then turn around and God don't want to use me. You didn't read his Bible. You didn't read his word. You didn't yield yourself. You get spiritually equipped, get spiritually prepared, get spiritually mature, and look out. Oh, someone ought to say amen. He's looking for someone tonight to use in a greater way. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here saying, you know what? I'm sick and tired of chasing fool's gold and foolishness and all the stuff that I'm out. Oh, my God. If, if he's looking for laborers, my God, I want to be Holy Ghost filled and fired up. I got a message burning. I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they recover. My home's going to get on fire for God. My babies and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and my neighbor. Why? Because I lead the way by getting my behavior towards the things of God are going to shift. God ain't going to deny you. He's going to call you. Your gift will make room for you. Well, tell me God can't use some of you. If he took a guy that couldn't hold a conversation, now I can't hardly shut up. My God, hallelujah. I frustrate me more than I frustrate you, trust me. Family services. Galatians 4, 6, and 7, because you are sons. Look at yourself right. You're, you're, you're the family of God. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. There ought to be something that's just crying, Abba. I heard Jacob the other day saying Abba to his dad. Thought it was cool. Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant than a son. When you get out of the mindset of being a servant and become a son, you think he's not going to use you? You think he's not going to turn around and, hey, you're, that's an heir. Let me give him some more right now. Our services, our church ought to erupt. There ought to be tongues and interpretation, miracles, signs, and wonders, because it's not all based on this guy standing here. But there's unity going here and here and here. Quit looking around for it. Oh, let's see how he does. Let's go. Let, let's say, wait a minute, God. I want to be a part. Let's see what God does. When you realize that verse, he gives you insight into the prodigal. And we should be a, a return friendly church. We should be a return-friendly church. Anyone who comes back repentant, humble, and with a servant's heart is returned as a son. I'm telling you something. If you'll come in here repentant, if you'll come in here humble, you don't come in as a servant. You come in as a son. I don't care how old you are, how long you've been gone, how long you've been drifting, man. You ought to walk in. God, God ain't going to make you pay. Well, my time's passed. No, no. You, some of you are so stuck in your stink and thinking. You're a tonic to yourself. The devil has not been able to defeat you. He hasn't tried. You did it to yourself. Therefore, it's appropriate for us to gather together and honor the church heritage and what, what's going on here. I think of this as a family reunion because the church is not just a congregation. It's a family. We get together on a Wednesday night. We get together on a Sunday and Sunday. That's why our Sunday nights are so special. We turn off the, 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 the people all peering in from that little camera over there, and we have an intimate time with God. Oh, that more of you would step up to the plate to want to be used. 
Ladies, get ready. I talked to Sister Croy. I said, I want to have a night where we let the ladies get up there. Let the ladies. She said, oh, man, I want to see a move of God. There should be times when we connect and refresh and uplift and encourage one another. That's what the church is for. And there's services like tonight, which is a teaching service. And we gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Anybody learn something that you can improve on tonight? Anybody say, wait a minute, you know what? Look out, come Sunday, I'm going to be better than I was last Sunday. When I come walking in here, I'm going to be better than I was. I'm going to sing that song better. I'm going to pray better. I'm, I'm going to increase my prayer life all week. I expect to be more spiritually in tune when I walk in here on Sunday morning. In fact, I'm going to be there Friday night so I can see if there's anybody I can minister then. You can put a little in the offering on that one for me, youth department. It's important to remember that the Apostle Paul included teaching within the parameters of the fivefold ministry. Teaching services to equip, to train, and to solidify our minds. Tonight is a point to, you know what? Mature Christians covet mature teaching. Are you hearing me? And we have celebration services. And we need more of those around here. We need services where the Holy Ghost takes over and we just celebrate God. Yeah. The other night when we had that testimony service, that was beautiful. That was great. We need to have more of those. We need to celebrate the goodness of God. Yeah. Exodus 15 tells us, For the horse of, of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took up the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for ye have triumphed. There just ought to be some times we get in here and we start worshiping God and thanking God. I've made it another week. I, I, I'm ready to worship and thank God. We're going to make it up. We got miracle signs and wonders happening. God's doing great. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to pray. The whole church ought to stand and sing and get excited and give God glory. Oh, hallelujah. Well, why don't we stand and love God right now? I thank him right now. I'm thankful. Thank you, God, for letting me know tonight there's more I can do in the kingdom of God. I can be involved to a greater degree. I can have gifts and signs and wonders in my life. If I'll covet the things of God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, we ought to get excited about it. You know what was awesome tonight? Did y'all hear the way Jacob played them drums? You got a little, little pizzazz or a little something in there that, that you didn't have before. That's awesome. That's awesome. There ought to be something about every one of us. We come in in the future. Hey. You hear so so praying before church. Man, you ain't never prayed like that before. Isn't that a whole lot better hearing something like, oh yeah, and all that like as usual? Hello, hello. We we have a whole lot of influence on what's said about us. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change, switch, turn the tide of what's said, what's written. By becoming what you really want to be. By doing what you really want to do. Now that I got you standing. Giving services. First Chronicles tells us. Then the people rejoiced for they. That they offered willingly. Because with perfect heart. They offered willing to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced. With great joy. It says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Listen, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Oh, that we that we would buy into that too. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us 
for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. And although giving is a consistent behavior, sometimes a spirit of sacrificial giving is required to advance a person's spirituality and the church's mission. There's sometimes, I'm, I've been there, I, I don't know who you are, but there's sometimes that you are called to a time of sacrifice and giving above and beyond everybody else in the church. And it's God testing you like he did Abraham and all them other folks in the Bible. Many folks fear this kind of service. I'm going to tell you, don't let fear of carnality keep you from reaping the blessing birthed out of sacrificial giving. I'm going to tell you something right now. When, when God saw what Abraham did, he said, now I know. There are some of you that are on the verge. If you'll just yield to what God's wanting and asking, you'll give the God a now I know and you'll start getting the blessings and the promises. One of the greatest compliments and endorsements Jesus ever gave a person. Are you hearing me? It was so vitally important that Jesus called his, come here leadership, I want you to see something. You're never going to see their name in lights. You're probably never going to notice them in the congregation, but I want you all to see something. Pulled those disciples close in and ordered them. I want you to hear this. I want you to see this. And he called to him his disciples in Mark 12, 43, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, this poor widow hath cast more in than all they that have cast in the treasury. There's going to be some embarrassing moments for some folks. For all they did cast into their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Boom, what a, what a moment for her. We all ought to have a moment like that. Sometimes the spirit of sacrificial giving is required. So in conclusion, healthy churches, healthy saints of God, experience a blend and balance of the different services that I've talked about, the different elements to living for God and being committed. And we need to get comfortable that, oh, it's not about me, but let me be ready to help somebody. Or this is all me. I'm being called to a level of prayer or sacrifice. Let me heed. Let me. Can you hear what God's saying to the church? Can you hear what he's saying? You see, unhealthy saints and unhealthy churches get stuck in two or three types. Well, and I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm not just going to get up here and try to preach evangelistically fire camp meeting services all the time. That's not the will of God. We can't exclude all those others. We can't have that kind of spiritual imbalance. Are you hearing me? We need to learn to be sensitive to the spirit. God, what are you doing tonight? My prayer is always, God, if there's someone tonight that I need to go pray for, speak to me. If there's someone I need to lay hands on, if there's a need here tonight, Lord, if there's someone that needs me to give some finances, speak to my heart. Hello? Learning to be sensitive to the Spirit is one of the most important spiritual disciplines and attributes any believer can cultivate. I, I, I say, covet earnestly the best gifts.